Hello there, welcome, welcome to Homekeepers. How wonderful to be here with you today. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you'll grab a cup of tea and just stay with us for the next few minutes. You'll be glad you did because we're gonna teach you something brand new, show you something brand new that uh, might figure into your life one way or the other. James Spencer is with me and he has, I guess you could use the word invented, the crescent womb and I know you've got a lot of questions about that, and I'm not going to explain it right now because we're going to show it to you. I will say this. If you're invited to a baby shower or you know somebody's going to have a baby or somebody's got a brand new baby, this is something you might want to give them, so keep that in mind. Also, Al Rochelle is with me, and in Tampa Bay, everybody knows that name. He was in broadcasting here for more than 50 years, a very familiar face, a very fine Christian gentleman, and my friend for many years. Glad to have him back. And, boy, you'll be glad you tuned in, because I'm going to join Stephanie, and we're going to make this caramel pecan cheesecake pie. I mean, we can never do anything better than that, and it looks awfully good, so we'll show you how to make it, and you can get the recipe if you like. Uh, before I join her, though, again, I remind you, we are viewer-supported. We thank you so much for viewing, and also for supporting, because... Strange thing, these camera people like a paycheck once in a while, <laughs> don't they? I think so. And Brooke, Brooke likes a paycheck. She's been on with us a while. Don't lot. we all? Yes. And uh, <laughs> it costs a lot to keep the lights on and it's all. It's not cheap and to have a television station. You wonderful people know that. And thank you for every gift. You can see on the air how you can contact us. Uh, if you still write checks like I do, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and also 1-800-229-0059. For those who do financial transactions like... Stephanie. Deb Stephanie. Debit yes. card, yes. Oh, hey, before we get started, <laughs> we got some great news here because she's going to start a blog. Mm -hmm. And you regular viewers already know you want to know how to watch it and how to get it because this is the girl that begins to celebrate Christmas again <laughs> on December 26th. Yes, so. for the next year. So what are you going to have on it? So the blog's going to be recipes, it's going to be craft, it's going to be money-saving tips, and all things Christmas. Mm -hmm. Not just Christmas, in addition to Christmas. That means Christmas mm -hmm. year-round on her blog. So I hope you will uh, jot that down. We'll mm -hmm. remind you from time to time. I'm excited about it because I don't know anybody who could do it better than Stephanie. I'm excited about it, I'm excited to share. Listen, if for some reason, Facebook and Instagram, and all those go away someday, you gotta have somewhere to go, and this will be the place. That's the place. Mm -hmm. Okay, I assume you're gonna mix up that cream yes, cheese. Yes, so we have a, a pie crust that you're nice enough to get the pre-made mm -hmm. ones for me. <laughs> I have cream cheese, a half a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and an egg. I'm gonna mix those all up. Mm -hmm. You're gonna uh, whisk up three eggs, and a jar of caramel topping, flavored yes. topping. So this is so simple and so good. This is going to be those one of those recipes that you love us for and that you hate us for. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, so we, we do get mail. So, I'm not you know, oh, there we you go. want all um, health recipes. Yes. Uh, my, my viewpoint is really portion. You don't have it's to eat about, half of the pie. Right. You don't. Uh -huh. It's one of my big problems is portion control because I just. I think that's the problem with Americans, <laughs> really. It is for sure. Because we so one egg, a block of cream cheese, a, tea, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a half a cup of sugar. And then I have some um, walnuts that are walnuts, right? No pecans that are. This is up. all going here. Yes, please. And, it's super, um, super simple. I think this one you might want to consider for Thanksgiving. Oh, Christmas. Have some friends over mm -hmm. and just have cheesecake pie. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take the pie crust. Which we purchased. Which we purchased because we can. I think on the last show we uh, mentioned that probably my mother never had any kind of a cooking aid. Mm -hmm. Like Bisquick or... Cake mixes, um, and certainly didn't have pie crust. Right. I would say my mother could make the best pie crust in the world. Listen, though. if you like to make your pie crust, <laughs> go for it. We, it's just not something I'm choosing to do at this time in my life. <laughs> 
So I'm just putting this in the bottom of the pie crust, right? Well, the truth is there's a lot of good shortcuts uh, to make some really good. Sure. Okay, I put okay. that in the bottom. Mm -hmm. I have a cup and a half of chopped pecans uh -huh. that I'm going to put on top of here. And then you had three eggs and a jar of caramel sauce that we're going to pour over the top of this. And then you're going to bake it at 375. It says 50, uh, 40 minutes. It took me 50, but it may have been because I had to put stuff in the refrigerator before and, we um, baked. It is supposed to chill, I believe. Yes. For a while. So yummy. That oh. looks delicious. I wonder. Listen, just have some friends over and have some coffee and tea and pie. Okay, that's all. <laughs> that, what is more enjoyable than that with a girl? Right. Ugh. Oh, look at, oh, seriously, so yummy. I bet. And listen. It's a trick pie because once you bake it, all of the caramel goodness goes to the bottom, the cheesecake is in the middle, and the, the pecans are on the top. It's magic. Go figure. Look how beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that. There we go. Okay. I told I mean, our guests if they're good, we'll give them a piece. Are you having it's a ridiculous. moment? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's that good. It's light. It's very light. Mm -hmm. Very light. So it's good. so light, it feels like there's mm. no calories mm. in it, but well. be not <laughs> deceived. <laughs> be not deceived, yeah. Mm -mm. Okay, if you want this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen and several ways to get it. Get it the way that, <coughs> that works best for you. We'll get it right out to you. Stay there. If you would like a copy of today's oh. recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I am pleased to welcome to Homekeepers a couple of gentlemen. Uh, James Spencer is my first uh, time to meet him, but Al Rochelle, we go back a long way. Be careful how you say long way. <laughs> yes, yes, we do, Arlene. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, when the camera's on you, the people in Tampa Bay are going to say, boy, he looks familiar. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, 32 years totally in the Tampa Bay market, 50 years in broadcasting, uh, 22 of those at Bay News 9, and loved every minute of it, and, uh, and love in retirement right now. That's good, and um, I also would like to add that you've kept a strong Christian testimony. Oh, absolutely. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, yep. Thankful for that. Jesus Freak from 1971, <laughs> still leading worship at Grace Christian Fellowship and still doing all those other wonderful Good things. Good for you. So, Good yeah. musician. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Besides, yeah. Yep. And James, welcome. Thank you, Arthur. I um, am anxious to tell the people about the Crescent Womb. Uh, and I'll let these gentlemen explain it, but also you have a you have a brand new baby. Well, Stella is seven now, but here she is here. She was basically the inspiration mm -hmm. for the whole innovation. You know, as a new father, I realized a lot of the risks our children face even before their first birthday. And I, I knew there had to be a better way. And I had the ultimate motivation through my daughter, Stella. And through that, we were able to develop and innovate Crescent Womb Infant Support Device, which is a patented solution for a lot of risks that families experience during that period of infancy. And uh, we've been able to, from there, help over 16,000 families from, you know, using it in my own nursery to now over 16,000 families helping them find a better night's sleep. And Arthur, to get an idea, we brought three videos. We want to run the first video. Yes. We'll actually show the Crescent Womb in action with a little baby. James, tell us about this. So this video is, um, is right here. Yeah. It'll be shown. Go okay, ahead. great. So, so this video, it, it's, it's demonstrating our infant support device. It's designed to universally attach to any standard crib uh -huh. and turn that crib into the safest environment outside of a parent's arms. And you got a beautiful baby in that. <laughs> sure, I do. So, absolutely, absolutely. And this video is really great because it shows one of the benefits we discovered through these 16,000 families is 
is prevention of startle reflux or alleviation of startle reflux. And this is something that all babies experience. They're, they're asleep. Yes, and they we've have, all seen it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, see, it looks like a womb. That's the name crescent mm -hmm. womb, a soft material that is very much like what was in a mother's womb. Do you know when I saw that? I thought, can you make them for big people? That looks to me like <laughs> it would be to be kind of suspended <laughs> and you're not dealing with lumps in your now, mattress. <laughs> what's also cool about this material that James thought about was I remember as a new father, and we have four kids and, and 12 coming on 13 grandkids, I'd spend that first week in that room just to make sure they're breathing all right yeah. and make sure they weren't laying on their face. But here's what's really cool. The next video that we're going to show you shows that even when a baby is laying on its face, crescent womb is breathable. James, tell me yeah, about that. Uh this is one of my favorite videos that I've ever seen of our device, and really this was from a local family who their daughter, Emery, as a newborn, would naturally roll immediately mm -hmm. onto her belly every time they would mm -hmm. place her in the crib. Mm -hmm. And the parents, obviously, as first-time parents, were just beyond frightened about this. They couldn't sleep. They found Crescent Womb, thought it could be a solution to this problem mm -hmm. because of the 360 degrees of breathability. They used it on the first night. They took this video, sent it to me with a message saying no that this kidding. was the first time in that four months wow. that they had been able to sleep together as husband and wife with their daughter safely in the room next to them. And you know, see, this is, what's, what, this is the reason I got involved in this product, because I thought in mm -hmm. retirement, if I'm going to use my knowledge in the media to help anybody, I want it to be with a product that that's, does what it says it's going to do changes the paradigm of thought. This changes everything for that first six months of life. Mm -hmm. And what, what we haven't even talked about is the fact that it reduces the pressure on a baby's skull. Now you're better explaining it than I am. Absolutely. One of the things we're very, very excited about is the ability of Crescent Womb Infant Support Device to promote even weight distribution. There's been a 600% increase in infant skull deformities, commonly known as flathead syndrome. Oh, I've heard of that. I've Ab seen it. Absolutely. Yeah. The only solution for parents now are a $3,000 corrective helmet, which is just pretty medieval at this point in modern yeah. age. Crescent Womb is able to alleviate that because it alleviates the concentrated area of pressure that causes flathead syndrome. Mm -hmm. And for grandparents, what's so good about this, again, with all of our grandkids, we've right. got this crib. And so we don't have to buy another crib. We can use that crib and the Crescent Room device attaches. We want to show that video right now, uh -huh. video number three, to actually show how it attaches in a crib. This is, uh, this is amazing. I've looked at all these, but uh, to watch this one, you've really thought of everything, I think. Well, this is what's really important to us is smart design, right? We want every family to be able to benefit from this. So we made it as universally as possible. We designed as many safety, f this is my favorite, our patented safety loop here. In case of any, if you have toddlers and they mess with buckles, you don't have to worry about any type of accidental discharge. We've gone through all of the Consumer Product Safety Commission testings, and we're very, very proud of our research-driven and safety-driven product development. What, what is that like to try to get an okay from a group like that? Well, it's very stringent, and you know what? That's a good thing because it protects co consumers. Absolutely. And But here's what I know is that if you're designing products for the right reasons and you're using your research to make effective solutions for problems that people face, you know, that, that's been our driver and that's helped us be able to streamline our compliance, streamline our testing, because from the very beginning, we are focused on safety and effectiveness, and that's really what those organizations look for. And what's different about this, again, being the news guy, when yes. I came to met with them and I say, wait a minute, I want to see all the documentation and all the testing that you've done. And to James's credit, he didn't just want to put a product out of there and go, well, that's cool. And yeah, <laughs> intuitively it works. No, we have the science behind it mm -hmm. that proves that it works. And, and, and also using this same approach going forward on some other products that we can't talk about yet, but just as revolutionary and just as good as the Crescent really? Womb. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, that, that'll be coming later. Can't but you again, give my audience a little heads up? Well, it's, no. another, it's another thing that will make grandparents not have to throw out your crib. I have a taste for them. So there's 10,000 crib rail related injuries every year in the United States, and this right. device that we're about to bring to market eliminates all of that risk. Yeah, in other words, grandparents don't throw out the crib. You can still use it. And that's important for kids who have multiple kids mm -hmm. as well, because again, it's that spacing that's a problem, because even with some kids, they get their hands stuck through mm -hmm. it. I don't want to give away too much, but it's, it's going to be exciting. Right. Uh, there was something, I hope I can find it here, about the the strong, okay, the strong material that's in the womb. Mm -hmm. Anyway. 
So in, and you yeah. tried to build on that. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, this was the genesis, right? What I learned through these parenting classes is that really the only time these folks would tell me that my daughter was safe was if I was alert and she was in my arms. And the product, Crescent Womb, the innovation is designed really to mimic that, to safely mimic the feeling of being held, to safely replicate the embrace of a parent because we all know as, as parents, that's just not possible. You're not, you're not awake, you're not alert, you're dealing with a screaming infant. And parents deserve a tool to help them, you know, adhere to these recommendations that sometimes seem, you know, uh, un unattainable. And this is just a tool for parents to help close that gap. And to show you something else that we don't have the video of, of so you say, well, what's the difference between a baby laying on a mattress and a baby laying in crescent room? Through some very sophisticated scientific equipment, we were able to measure the pressure per square inch of a baby's head on a mattress mm -hmm. versus crescent womb. On crescent womb, get this, it's at least 150% less pressure on a baby's skull, remember, still soft, still forming, right. than on a, on a mattress. Did you go, well, the mattress feels soft. No, we mm -hmm. can show you the science that says, no, the crescent womb is. Also, and I just think the, the way they're laying when you're laying oh, yeah. on a, Hard a crib, yeah. And this is a brand new baby. Do you have any uh, feedback? Uh, because I know this is new, but there are a few thousand people who have it. Yes, ma'am. Um, on sleeping, are they sleeping longer? Are they sleeping better? Oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah, so the, you know, this t this device was designed as you know, it's the first ever infant support device, patented innovation. And as a turn, we found, you know, it very, very Im has a positive effect on infant sleep. We've received, I mean, that video of Emery was a, one, a great example yeah, We of didn't that. solicit that. That came <laughs> to us voluntarily. And, you know, if you guys want to go to our website and see, there's numerous mm -hmm. reviews where parents are actually saying, oh, my goodness, two to three hour segments of sleep. We're now seeing six, seven, eight, even ten hours of uninterrupted sleep with their infant, which has just been incredible because we all know sleep is priceless. And the fact of the matter is... Every, parents lose about over 400 hours of sleep in the first year of infancy. And there's no and telling. they need that sleep desperately. They need that. They right. need that. Which uh, reduces this incidence of postpartum depression as well. Because I had one of my daughters who had, who had it really bad. Why? Because the mother's getting some sleep? Because nobody was getting any sleep in the, for, for one of our grandchildren because the, the baby just said, I don't need to sleep. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to describe it any other way. Mm -hmm. so it's I've words, heard of those nightmares. My yeah. kids were pretty good. but So, uh, it's, so it's just another tool. And, and that's what I uh, love about what James did. It's like one thing when you invent a product and you solve a problem. But then when you invent a product with one purpose and you go, oh, by the way, it also does this. We're getting this, this, and, and this. And it also does this. Mm -hmm. And it also does, and then you say to yourself, mm -hmm. well, if we've done this with the Crescent Womb, what's another project that we could do in the very near future that's going to be just as revolutionary? And grandparents, you're going to love that, it. That's you're going to clap. And baby showers. Yes, absolutely. 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 Well, James, let me talk to you a minute. I've never invented anything. <laughs> uh, what Have you invented anything besides this? And what what in the world could... Just stim stimulate your mind to come up with something like this. I think it's pretty amazing. Thank you so much, Arthur. You know, that's a great question. And here's, I think, the main, the main ingredient for creating and innovating something useful is starting with a problem, and preferably a problem that you've experienced personally and have the motivation to solve mm -hmm. because it's that intimate and that near and dear to your heart. That is step one of creating any type of usable innovation, usable invention. Is this and your first one? So this is my first patent. I do have several other patents pending for a lot of our product development that yep. Al mentioned. But wow. Yes, ma'am. Yep, so I have, you know, created things, but this is my first USPTO recognized invention. So I'm very proud of that, and we have a lot of other things in the pipeline. Um, but yeah, the thing is start with the problem, and then, you know, don't keep, keep moving through it. Nothing is right the first time. I created 13 different prototypes before you know, from the one I designed for Stella in our nursery, there was 15 other ones that were created before <laughs> I shared them with any other folks. It's easy to understand how one thing will lead to another, and you'll probably eventually have so many in mind that mm -hmm. you might not be able to live long enough to uh, bring them into being. But I've mentioned <clears throat> on this show before, we ought to really pray for our scientists, mm -hmm. our physicians. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my family, we've got kidney transplants, we've got diabetes, mm -hmm. we've got my daughter-in-law gave my son a kidney 21 years ago. Oh, God and uh, think of that God-given information mm -hmm. 
that goes into science and medicine. Well, couldn't we also pray for some of our inventors? Oh, absolutely. And you know, here's, here's, here's our greatest challenge. It is what, what James is coined is a paradigm shift because most people just think of the crib and the mattress yeah. and that's about it. So we know we're asking people to look at this device and go, wow, this is not like the mattress. Even though the mattress is still under the baby, it's still safe. So we have to educate people that this device is there, that it's available, that it works, it's been safety tested. And I think that's going to be our biggest challenge, don't you think? Absolutely. So parents, there's been a way of doing things for quite some time. Right. And unfortunately, that way of doing things has led us since the 90s to a 200% increase in, in infant uh, sleeper-related deaths. It's led to a 500% increase in skull deformities. And we've had a, a relatively plateaued level of sleep-related infant death in general. That total is now about 3,600 per year in the U.S. And that tells me that change is needed. So we're asking folks, hey, look, we've gone, like Al said, the necessary science and necessary safety and compliance testing. We understand this is a new way of looking at how to care for your infant, but we, we very much are passionate about helping educate folks, helping them understand this, and helping people find a better way to care for their young families. Yeah, I'm sure that parents uh, can tell when they've outgrown it or whatever. They're probably not any hard and fast rules on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, with your experience, how long will a baby be in it? Six weeks? Two months? Yes, that's a great question, I think. Thank you for bringing that up. Crescent Womb Infant Safety Bed is designed for use from birth to approximately six months, about 22 six pounds. Months. Yes, I mean, that, these, are the critical, these are the critical periods of growth, right? I mean, it's scientific fact that we learn the most and develop the most you know, from birth and then decreasingly so as we grow older. So I'm very, very passionate about bringing tools and solutions to this first year of life and making that as seamless and as healthy and as intimate as possible for the families. Yeah, we, we all know horror stories from cribs. Oh, oh yes, right. Uh, I, I heard one somewhere where the baby kind of almost got its head wedged between. It happens every day. Really? Yeah, it happens every day. Um, and also, I just try to think of what's the baby thinking? They've been in the womb, and now they're laying on this hard mm, surface when they're used to being like mm -hmm. this. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I can believe that they give in a lot of parents some good sleep. Yeah. And then also because the suffocations with sudden infant death syndrome, mm -hmm. some of those we really don't, scientists really don't, they don't know exactly they why don't it caused. Know, huh? But some of them are related, what they call SUID, which are uh, uh, deaths that occur because of strangulation, suffocation, babies calling, crawling into the corner of a crib, babies laying on their face like we saw with crescent womb, the airflow and the oxygenation is all right there. So those are all benefits and things. And, and actually there was a law that was passed by Congress got rid of baby. I can remember when they got rid of baby cribs because I just bought this real expensive baby cribs and it had all these animals and giraffes on it and I love it on there. And I put it in the crib for the grandkids and my daughter walks in and she says, get rid of that grandpa. And I go, I just <laughs> bought that. Get rid of it You're because that, be a good I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be a good grandpa. Get rid of it. So we got rid of it. And now, why? What was wrong with that? Oh, but suffocation because kids get themselves into the corner, or they'll they'll when they're stretching and stuff, they may pull down part of the crib liner, and that was a, a, a congressional act that required they did that. And right after they did that, we're talking about Sid deaths dropped dramatically. But then they started climbing up again and kind of have plateaued at a certain level mm -hmm. because not all parents have crescent wombs. Not all parents got rid of the crib bumpers. Not all parents keep the children. Oh yeah, in beds. those bumpers which were designed for something very good, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to protect the baby, but yeah. it, be it itself became a big problem. Yeah. Are they even legal anymore? Many, many states have banned them. A lot of large retailers have banned them. And as Al mentioned, there's actually a bipartisan supported law pushing through called the Safe Cribs Act that will eliminate and make illegal all of these crib bumpers. Well, I, I pray that this would be a major a uh, way to stop crib deaths. I've, I can't tell the, uh, I was a pastor's wife for years. Right. When an infant dies, mm. how sad, oh, right. mm. how sad it is. I remember one couple in our church and they were, they were teenagers mm -hmm. and they looked like two kids crying over a doll. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to lose <clears throat> a beautiful, sweet baby 
that you've carried, uh, I can't imagine the grief. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and this is part of the solution to help prevent that. On that note, what's, what's very interesting, just something to add there is, you know, the World Health Organization states that three million of all infant deaths that occur every year, uh, there's about 4.2 million globally, three million of those, according to the World Health, World Health Organization, could be avoided with simple, low-cost solutions. And that has been, you know, why don't we have those yet? Why aren't those widely yeah. available? If the World Health Organization is stating this, that's a call to action to develop products. We need that, to get that word out. Yeah, yes, yeah. ma'am. And Very he's even much. donated some of these products to a, a missionary group in Uganda. So spreading the word uh, to other countries as well. Yes. Uh, and so you've got other things in the pipeline that you're not going to tell me about oh, today. Oh, you're, you're going um, to blow your mind. <laughs> but may I ask you if they're on this subject for the protection of children? And Everything we do is on this subject. Everything. This is a majorly underserved market. This is a problem that people have not focused on and, in fact, have gone counter against because they've presented solutions like those crib bumpers that it actually created more made, danger. Made it worse, yeah. So this is something we're very focused on and we'll maintain focus on until we're able to see strides yeah. and improvement right. in this market. Manufactured here in the St. Pete Clearwater area, a Clearwater High School. Clearwater, what'd you, what'd you Clearwater High School. Clearwater High School. Yeah. There you go. A graduate. So uh, James has made a real point to make sure that we keep it local, so we're not going to have supply chain issues that are now affecting everybody else. But this is this is kind of a word of a mouth thing. That, but I'll tell you, the the kind of responses that we're getting from parents that use it. I mean, you you can't even make up the stuff that they're mm -hmm. talking about because it's so relieving to have advice that it is safe, and that's again, key. And also it. A lot of people co-sleep with children too when they get so it's tired. They don't, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? This can prevent that. If the baby can sleep better, then there won't be the co-sleeping as well. Just gives parents a tool, right? I mean, this is just essentially an extra set of hands where you know your baby will be safe and secure, even if they're screaming their head off. You know that they're gonna. It's fine. It's just tears. There's no other risk. <laughs> I believe that anything you can do those first few weeks, months to duplicate the womb is a huge blessing, yes, not only to parents and all, but to that child that mm -hmm. really, really feels secure. It's, I was in the room when both my uh, n my youngest grandsons were born. Mm -hmm. They're six feet tall now, but <laughs> there, there's something about when they first come out of the womb and, oh, yeah. and you want to keep that so very, very comfortable. Oh. Hey, we're out of time. Yeah. It's been so much fun to see you guys again. Crescentwomb.com. No, I sound like a hot guy, you know, yeah. a sales yeah. guy. <laughs> Crescentwomb.com. Just go look at the videos. He's that, doing what's familiar. You've done it all your life. It's in the news tonight. Kinda, yeah. We are out of time, but I want to know, you know, we love you. And remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.